Before you turn on the laminator, make sure that the temperature knob on the left hand side is set to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the optimal running temperature for the laminator. When this is done, you can turn on the laminator by flipping the red switch on the front. The red light should come on indicating that the laminator is heating up. When the light goes off, this means that the laminator has reached the set temperature. If you need to turn the temperature up, slowly turn the knob until the red light comes on again. Do not turn the knob quickly as this could cause the laminator to overheat and break the thermostat. Before changing the laminator film, make sure you ease the tension on the top and bottom knobs by turning them counterclockwise. When you put the new film rolls on the laminator, make sure the rods holding the film are back in their original places on top and bottom. When loading the top roll, pull the film out from the bottom of the roll and around the front of the top heat roller, making sure the dull side is facing out. When loading the bottom roll, pull the film from the bottom of the roll. Pull the film around the back of the steel bar and around the front of the bottom heat roller, again making sure the dull side is facing out. Use a piece of thin cardboard, which is usually supplied with laminating rolls, to help push the film through the heat rollers. Here is a diagram showing how the loaded film should be in the laminator. Tighten the tension knobs clockwise slowly until all the wrinkles are gone from the laminating film. The laminator must be at operating temperature to do this. When placing an item in the laminator to be laminated, place it on the tray and line it up with the slot between the rollers before turning on the rollers. Always make sure that the film is coming out of the back of the laminator, not getting wrapped around the rollers. This can cause the customer's merchandise to become unusable as well as damaging the laminator. When loading multiple items into the laminator, always make sure you place them about an inch apart. This will leave enough room for the lamination to be cut without breaking the seal around the laminated items. Again, always make sure the lamination is coming out of the back of the laminator. If a wraparound does occur, make sure when removing the laminating film you do not cut the rubber rollers. If the rollers are not rolling, use a Phillips screwdriver to open the left plastic housing on the laminator. This is where the chain and sprockets are located. If the chain is broken, it will need to be replaced. If the sprockets are worn or broken, they will need to be replaced. Otherwise, check to see if the sprockets are loose. They will need to be tightened using a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. Now you should be familiar with the basics of laminator operations and maintenance.